Tom, we didn't see that coming uh, on Sunday, uh, how the boys after the result? Yeah, not too bad. I think um, it was probably disappointing in the last 15 minutes. We, we didn't play a very good footy all day, but then the last 15 minutes, I think they put on eight or nine goals, which is uh, never acceptable and turns a sort of 50, 60 point loss into a 100 100 plus point loss so it would have been nice to grind it out to a to a 30 40 point loss and walk away and and take some positives out of it but um, it wasn't ideal and, and the boys um, know that and the good thing is we play again on Saturday night against Collingwood another good opportunity for us. The heat was that, that a big factor? I mean, it was no I don't think so I think it was um, we train in it every day so we probably should have been used to it more than them they had t two injuries as well so we should have probably finished over the top of them but um, it's, it's a hard one to explain. I think we sort of threw in the white towel a little bit, which was disappointing. But as I said, you, you, you've got to move on pretty quick. And six days we've got Collingwood again. And um, we can't make the finals, obviously, but we've, we've got a feeling that we can shape it in the last three weeks. Just the two wins, did you sort of get into a bit of a comfort zone after that? Feel like no, I don't think so. I think Adelaide came to play and played a really good brand of footy. They're very um, offensive and they play a really good um, style when they get their game going. And we wanted to be. Um, really super defensively in the last six weeks and um, we thought we did that in the first two weeks but then let ourselves down obviously um, on the weekend. Right, well what's the, do you have to refocus now? You've got three very difficult matches to finish the season and coming off arguably you, you know, one of your worst losses of the season. How do you sort of refocus and what do you yeah, well, we obviously had the review yesterday and went through that and all the boys are going through um, their individual before, tapes now and with their coaches so We'll tidy that up this afternoon, but you've got to move on. And um, Collingwood is another good test for us. That they obviously had a tough game over in Perth, and they're coming off a six-day break as well. So we feel like it's a good opportunity to go down there and um, put our best foot forward and play a really good, good style of footy. We we obviously want to lim limit their their scoring opportunities and then um, give our forwards a chance to kick a score. We. We were only minus seven inside fifties on the weekend, but you lose by 100 points. So it's about taking the opportunities when they come and, and then making sure that we try and um, limit the opposition. But we got smashed around the footy as well. Contested footy was um, a blowout and clearances was a blowout as well. So, And even tackles, we, we got smashed in that area as well. So I'd, I'd say um, that's going to be a heavy focus for us going into the game. We've got to make sure that we get our contest right um, initially around the footy, but that's all over the ground as well. Do you feel like you're um, waging one-man war in there, in, inside the centre? Because your, your contested footage is really good, but I think it's this, when Brisbane lose, it's because they get smashed in the contest? Um, probably a little bit at times. I think um, a, a few of the boys have stood up in that area. Dane Zorko has been really good in the last few weeks, and Pierce um, as well. But the contested footy side of things, yeah, we, we need to improve that across the board. We've, I think on the weekend, Adelaide had 10 or 11 players, um, 8 plus contested footy and we had 3, um, which you're not going to win many games when, that, when that's the result. Do you think it's technique or size or...? Oh, I'd say it's probably more an attitude thing. I think contested footy, yeah, it, it is probably a little bit um, technique thing, but um, if you want to go in there and win the footy, then you go in there and win it. So it's also free kicks against and, and stuff like that as well. So we've got to be disciplined in that. We've, we've had a probably 10 tendency to give away stupid free kicks at times, which have probably blown out the contested footy as well, numbers. From day one when you entered the league, you've been good in contests. Do you think it's because you played forward as a junior and you're used to having an opponent? Because a lot of draftees run around in under 18s without opponents. Is that, yeah. is that the reason? Or? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I only started playing forward when I was sort of 15, 16. I was a midfielder up until then. and. Um, my parents always played me upper level, so I was always the, the smallest kid out there. So I had to learn different ways. And I, to be honest, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's just natural, naturally something that I've um, adapted into my game. And I think probably put it down to mum and dad playing me above. So I was always playing against kids two, three years older than me. So you have to work out ways to beat them because you're always undersized. So probably put it down to that a little bit. And, and playing forward, obviously you've got someone and you've got to look to manoeuvre them. So I think. That, that is probably one of my strengths has been in the contest and yeah, I'd put it down to maybe playing forward as a junior. I remember your, your first game against <laughs> Collingwood. Yeah. But you, you came in the year before and Richie and Redden, a couple of blokes have got a start ahead of you. You slid down the draft a little bit. Did you think when you played that first game that, you know, 99 games later you'd be where you are now, you know, a red hot all Australian contender? Like it's. Did you think it would pan out the way it has? Nah, not at all. I was wrapped to get my first game. It took um, 
obviously played around 18 or 19 that year and um, it was an amazing experience for me and the game was that quick for me and, and I honestly was wrapped that I got one game and I knew that I had to go away and do a lot in the pre-season um, that year and I did and I think um, I'm, like to, if someone had told me when I got drafted that I'd, I'd play 100 games and, and um, put up some of the numbers that have been put up, like I, I wouldn't have expected that at all. And um, obviously, the ma major focus for me now is team success, and that's the reason you play footy. You don't play for the individual honours; that they're they're a byproduct of the way you go about it. And I'd much prefer to have team success and um, be playing finals footy. You say that, but yeah. I mean, you wanted to get into the uh, 40 All Australian man squad and probably even into the uh, the 24. Or however, they pick. I mean, does that? How does that sit with you, being a, a kid that was sort of overlooked by most clubs when it came to the draft and you've worked really hard? Oh, yeah, obviously it'd be a great individual achievement and, and so on. And um, I've said numerous times, like, I'd, I haven't played a game of finals footy. A few of our boys have, but um, I haven't played that. And I'd much prefer to get that and then get the individual awards then instead of getting individual awards. If that comes, it, it might not. And, um, that, that'll play out at the end of the year, but it would be a great honour for me and, and from where I've come from and the hard work that I've done. Rocky, you overlooked in that draft, as we all know. Did that, has that helped you play with any extra edge, uh, I guess, coming into the club and, and subsequently, do you think? Yeah, I've always been told since I was about 10 or 11 I wasn't good enough to make it. Even even then, I was too small. I, I'd, I'd never make it at the top level. I'd be a good country footballer back home. And I think people... Um, putting me down has always given me an extra little bit of motivation and, and you always want to prove people wrong and um, I finally got, got a chance um, with Brisbane and um, forever grateful for that opportunity and um, I'm, I'm always going to hang around and repay the faith and um, to, to, to get to where we are now and where I am individually um, it just shows that, that the club does have good development and so on and put, look back when, when I got drafted and Craig Britton and Craig Lambert and Chris Johnson and blokes, blokes like this behind the scenes that, that probably don't get a lot of credit. The way they sort of set me up, I came from a country environment where you train one, one night, two nights a week to, to being a full-time footballer and, and just to have those blokes around to support you and show you the way it's done, I'm forever grateful for that and hopefully, as I said, we can, we can have some team success in the future. And you mentioned before you got the chance to shape up <laughs> yeah, it'd be amazing. Um, obviously, you'd love the opportunity to uh, impact on, on finals teams and, and make sure they know that, that we're here. And obviously, there's a great rivalry between the Brisbane Lions and Collingwood Footy Club in the past. So it's a good opportunity for our group and where we're at. They're obviously competing for finals, so they're, they're going to be fired up. And it's important that we start well, because if we give a, give a team an opportunity to get a jump on us, then we're, we're clawing our way back for the whole game. So. Hopefully we can go down there to the G where, where you want to play your footy because that's where the uh, the big day in September is played and that's the reason you play footy. So it's a good opportunity for our young group to go down there and hopefully string a good four-quarter performance together and walk away with a win. Rocky, just one on your, um, your own personal development in the past, been a sort of tumultuous sort of 12 months at the club and um, we know you were a vice-captain last year, but how is the new coach and you've taken on a lot more leadership responsibility on and off the field as well? How, how have you sort of found your maturity, I guess, in the last... 12 months and how you've developed it. Yeah, um, obviously there was some pretty trying times with the footy club and Lepper's been outstanding, he's um, been super supportive and um, any time I've needed him or, or talked to him we, we catch up quite regularly for, for coffees and so on and just talk about things but there's a bloke yesterday that retired from the footy club at um, Brent Maloney that was outstanding for me since he got to the footy club. He was a leader at the footy club that he came from before and um, the amount of lessons that he's taught me and, and the way to do things and um, he, he gives you constant feedback and I think um, Beam is an outstanding leader and he's passed on some really good knowledge to me and it has been sort of another tough period for us on field at times this year but it's about how, how you react to those things that happen on field and um, hopefully I've, I've added a few more strings to my bow and um, can continue to lead the group. Well, what are the, the, the strings you're referring to? I think probably just when the going gets tough and um, the ability just to change the momentum of the game and try and slow things down and um, get get group because we are a quiet group. It's important that we our leaders um, and our older blokes really take take the control in those situations and, and use our voice and try and change the momentum of the game, whether we want to play fast or slow. So it's probably those things, and then also leading our younger midfield group with 
with the amount of injuries we've had and the experience we've lost this year, we've obviously th thrown kids in there like James H, Sam Mays is playing there at the moment, uh, Nick Robinson and all these boys have come through. So it's important that me and Pierce, probably in particular in the midfield at the moment, lead by example and, and keep checking in after every centre bounce and, and go over our roles and so on. Did, did you find, because you've got a big personality, that there was a lot of expectation and I guess uh, responsibility placed on you from a pretty early age and, and how did you cope with that? Yeah I'd say so I think um, there probably was and high expectations but I don't mind that I think um, it's, it's a natural thing for me to be outspoken and so on and I think I rub people up the wrong way as well in saying that so it's about getting the balance right and making sure that that you have the, a really good balance and you know you know the boys personality and how to approach each one because um, every individual reacts differently to a situation so um, it probably I had to learn a few lessons I was obviously thrown in the, the deep end as a 20 year old thrown into a leadership group but I think um, in saying that it's been an added bonus for me and I've learned so many lessons in the four or five three or four years that I've been in the leadership group. Do you feel like you've become a more damaging player just forward or centre or moving the ball into the foot? Like you found some targets on the weekend where other guys were blazing. Is, is that an area you, you feel like you've improved? Yeah, I think um, I'm never going to be the player that's running and taking four bounces down the wing sort of thing. So it's important that my possessions set up others to get into attacking position. So I like to win the footy in close and then set other players up. But it's important also that you have an impact on the scoreboard and, and you're delivering it to the forwards. So on the weekend, probably the week before as well, felt like we blazed away a little bit too much. So we went on went on about that and we had to lower our eyes and hit targets so I think yeah as my career sort of grown I, I used to get a lot of footy probably out wide and, and down back obviously I played on the wing a fair bit um, in that period but I think I've started to become a bit more damaging and, and hitting targets inside 50.